Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I've been out and about testing this, the brand new Microsoft Surface Go 3, which from just £369 or $399 is the most affordable Surface tablet slash two-in-one laptop if you add the optional tap cover keyboard you can buy. But the thing is, despite its iPad-like size, this is a full-fat Windows 11 PC, and actually it's one of the first devices to ship with Windows 11 out of the box, and Microsoft reckon this is good enough to replace your tablet and maybe your laptop as well. But with so many good normal laptops and iPads and Chromebooks and also the rest of the Surface lineup that's just been updated, should you go for the Go or should it just go away? I'll see myself out. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I have to say, when I first unboxed this and started using it, I did get a sense of deja vu because the Surface Go 3 looks and feels identical to the Go 2. The type cover is exactly the same as well. So really the headline with the Go 3 is the fact that we get new Pentium Gold and also 10th gen Core i3 processor options, which Microsoft reckon will bring a 60% boost in CPU performance, which spoilers isn't exactly what I found. It is also a little bit cheaper here in the UK this time around, although the US pricing seems to have stayed the same. So the Go 3 arrives alongside a bunch of other updated Surface devices, including probably its closest rival, its own big brother, just like in my own family to be honest, the Surface Pro 8. And the price here Pro 8 is kind of the same idea as the Go, only with better specs, a 120Hz screen, and much, much better performance. To be honest, there's just nothing else quite like the Go 3 in terms of what it can do and also the premium build quality for this kind of money. Well, apart from last year's Go 2, which actually might be a better buy, maybe. Hmm. Because generally two-in-one laptops are a lot more expensive than this, particularly in its uh, entry-level spec. And also if they are a two-in-one laptop, you still have that bulky keyboard that has to sort of fold over on itself and you can feel it on the back not really the best way to use a tablet. So you do have that proper tablet and laptop experience here, and it doesn't cost a fortune, at least in its entry-level spec. And to be honest, the closest in terms of form is probably an iPad with a keyboard. But then again, the Go has full-fat Windows 11, which is a lot more flexible in terms of app compatibility and options. And I think really it's aimed at students and workers, people who need an ultra portable device that can, you know, do a bit of office work, watch Netflix, browse the web, and also, you know, is pretty decent for taking notes and doodling and drawing, just a good all-rounder laptop. But annoyingly, the Go 3 also inherits the same stingy storage options. You just get 64 or 128 gigs. It's less of a problem if you're just browsing or streaming and maybe everything's in the cloud. And also we do get a micro SD card slot, which mitigates the problem a little bit, but with Windows 11 and a few apps installed along with your files, you might find that you need some extra external storage. But there's potentially a bigger issue because once you go up to the mid or high level specs of this and then you add a type cover keyboard, which I would definitely recommend because without it, it feels a bit incomplete. This does start to get pretty pricey. Once you move up to the mid spec with its equally lightweight performance Pentium and you're suddenly at 500 pounds or 625 with a touch cover. And then if you go for the Core i3 version, then you're looking at around 700 pounds with a type cover. And for that much money, you can get a far more powerful regular laptop with more storage. Although having said that, I get that people who want to go three might not want a normal laptop. But putting price to one side for a minute, in terms of design, this really is lovely. And it looks and feels a lot more premium than the base price might suggest, with a smart, lightweight magnesium alloy body and a sharp and responsive 10.5 inch 3x2 touchscreen. Although again, it is the same as the Go 2, but that's no bad thing. It's also surprisingly easy to use one-handed as a tablet. And if you punch up the scaling factor in Windows, it's easy enough to navigate around, although it's still not quite the same as a dedicated tablet OS like on an iPad. So sometimes icons and edges of Windows can get a bit tricky to move and resize. It's also pretty light at just 544 grams or 1.2 pounds. And while there's easy access to power and volume buttons, judging by the location of the cameras and the speakers, this has been designed to use horizontally most of the time. We do also get a USB-C port, which can be used for charging, as well as a headphone jack and also Microsoft Surface Connector, also for charging and plugging in hubs like the expensive Surface Dock if you want extra ports. So as you're using it, the ports are all down the right hand side. Although I don't love the position of the Type-C port halfway up, which keeps the power cable in your eye line the whole time. 
However, if you do fancy a little extra oomph for your editing, rendering, and you know, gaming, then check out one of these NVIDIA Studio Certified PC Specialist desktops. And a big thank you to NVIDIA and PC Specialist for sponsoring this video. So GeForce powers games, whereas NVIDIA Studio caters to more creative applications. And so with a Studio Certified PC, you're going to get the best and most reliable performance in the widest range of pro apps. And of course, pre-builds are one of the best ways to get a brand new GPU right now without paying ridiculous prices. And with an RTX 3000 series card, you're getting the absolute best performance with the RT cores, Tensor cores, and NVENC encoder speeding up your games and your workflow. Plus, you're getting all the best technologies like ray tracing, DLSS support, and reflex for games. And that fast NVENC encoder helps speed up my editing. So click the link in the description below and head over to pcspecialist.co.uk, who, by the way, are one of the UK's leading custom PC suppliers. Build quality is always top notch. You get a great warranty. And also you can either play around with their configurator to spec your own PC or pick from one of their recommended NVIDIA Studio certified PCs. So why not give it a try? But I tell you what, I do still really love this hinge. I think it's one of the absolute highlights of the Surface lineup, particularly the Go 3. There's nothing else that feels as robust as this. You can fold it almost all the way down, but there's still a little bit of incline, which makes it more comfortable for browsing or drawing on. And you get these little cutouts on the chassis other side, so you can easily flip it out. And also, if you want, the stand actually works in a vertical orientation, although only if you don't mind it being bolt upright. The signature type cover keyboard is just as lovely as ever as well. It doesn't add much to the weight, and it turns this into a properly usable laptop alternative. The regular type cover is covered in a microfiber material, but for an extra 25 pounds or dollars, you can get this Alcantara clad signature cover, which I have to say does feel a lot nicer. In terms of typing feel, I think it's way better than Apple's Smart and Folio iPad keyboards. It's a lot closer to the uh, much more expensive Apple Magic keyboard, although I do still prefer that overall. Although be careful because there's zero resistance in this hinge, so if you tilt it too far forward or you close it without really looking, then it might come crashing down and crush your fingers, as happened to me. So for my money, while this does make the whole package a bit more expensive, the type cover is an absolute essential uh, addition to the Go 3. Now as for this 10.5 inch PixelSense screen, which again is about the same size as one of the regular iPads, by laptop standards, this is pretty small, but then again, that small ultra portable nuss is what you're paying for here. Image quality wise, it does what it needs to when it's sharp enough for most users and it gets reasonably bright. Color accuracy is good, although not quite pro level or anything, but easily good enough for what most of us need. And then if you fancy paying a bit more, then you can also go for this new Surface Slim Pen 2. And also there's a haptic motor to give you more of a sense of drawing on a real paper. It's really good. It's not quite as convenient as the iPad and the Apple Pencil where you can just wirelessly charge it by attaching it to the side. This does just about hold there, although the magnets aren't very strong, but you actually have to plug this into a separate little cradle for it. But for any keen doodlers, note takers, and well, artists, I guess, this is definitely worth considering. And then we have the 1080p webcam. Uh, I'm in my little new studio. We've got Pete filming here. And the quality is actually very good. One thing I can say about almost all Surface devices is that the webcam, uh, the selfie camera, if you will, the quality is very good. It's 1080p uh, and the colors are pretty accurate. The noise is quite low. So yeah, despite its flaws, one of the perks of having a go like this is you get one of the best webcams in that kind of price range. So altogether, we have a five megapixel camera on the front, which can also be used for Windows Hello face unlocking, and also an eight megapixel camera on the back, which is the footage you're seeing now. And they both do very good 1080p video, which to be honest is probably what you'll be mostly using them for, although it's handy if you need to take a photo of some documentation or something. Okay, let's get to the elephant in the ointment, if I'm gonna mix my metaphors. Let's talk about performance, because it's not great. Even with this top spec Core i3, Performance in Windows 11 can be a bit laggy and unresponsive sometimes. I criticize the Go 2 for the same reason, and despite Microsoft's claims of a 60% performance boost with the new processors, I can't say it felt noticeably quicker. In fact, if you look at the Geekbench results for the top spec Go 2 versus the 3, performance is only maybe 5 to 10% faster, which is considerably lower than 60%. I mean, maybe I am a little bit spoiled in terms of the hardware I generally use, and I kind of expect that instant responsiveness. Um, and obviously, for most people, this will be perfectly fine. Most people don't care about a one second lag or a little bit of delay when you're opening folders and files. But I think for 700 pounds for this high spec Core i3, the equivalent regular laptop with 
probably, you know, a 10th or 11th Gen i5 would be a lot more powerful and you would feel that difference. And I also haven't been able to test the lower spec Pentium versions of the Go 3, which also come with much slower eMMC flash storage. And so I dread to think how the eMMC version performs, especially as that only has four gigs of RAM. But I suppose one consolation is that it's completely silent because, well, it doesn't have a fan. As for gaming on the go, well, there's not exactly a lot of graphics power on tap here. And to give you an idea, in Rainbow Six Siege at 1080p with the lower settings, I got 11 FPS. Although at 720p that bumped up to 19. But still, there is a better way, and that's cloud gaming, whether it's through Nvidia's GeForce Now or Xbox Cloud Gaming. And so because you're streaming the games from the cloud, you're not using the relatively low power hardware in the Go 3, and it also doesn't really drain your battery life. Although you do need a pretty good internet connection, and ideally you'd use a wired ethernet port via an adapter, although the Go 3 does have Wi-Fi 6. So assuming you're not gonna be doing heavy 4K video editing or rendering on this, and you're just you know, using it for basic everyday kind of stuff and maybe cloud gaming, then it's gonna be absolutely fine. But one area I was a little bit more disappointed with is the battery life, because it was actually pretty good on the Go 2, but this seems to be a bit worse. So for example, yesterday I was writing this review on it, I was watching some videos, browsing the web, all on mid to high-ish brightness, you know, everyday kind of stuff, and by around the seven hour point, I was out of juice. And it only managed seven and a half hours in my full screen video test, which was pretty disappointing, and nowhere near the 11 hours that Microsoft claims. So let's wrap up, and I guess my conclusion for this Surface Go 3 review is if you do quite like the idea of buying one of these, Maybe go for the Go 2 from last year. The battery is better. The performance isn't really that much different, at least in my experience. Same screen, same design. And since it's been out for a year, if you can get it on a deal or on sale, then, well, it's probably a better buy. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this per se, but it's just not really much of an upgrade, which is not something I say very often. And I have to say, I've come away from this a little bit disappointed. I did expect more. I think it's still gonna be a good option for a lot of people who want a you know, basic all-rounder machine and really do value that ultra portability, but for most people, a regular laptop is a better option in terms of performance and battery life. This really only makes sense in the lower entry-level specs if you're not that bothered about performance. But what do you reckon? Am I being a bit harsh? Or do you think Microsoft could have done a bit better this time? Let me know what you think of the Go 3 in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy the video, then a cheeky little like and subscribe would be lovely. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.